this marriage is an arrangement. There's something that you're fucking for. That gotta be the dumbest. Maybe I shouldn't have watched this video because I'm like, say, I'm like, like really, really close to crashing out. Huh? Okay, so, um, romance with no money. Romantic, no money. Shut down a restaurant, have dinner, just the, the two of you. Fella, uh, take, I think fella, take notes. Dinner. <laughs> just eating, right? Just, <laughs> uh, How can you shut down a restaurant with dinner. no money? What restaurant? She is dumb. Shutting down the restaurant. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you know, That's not, you can't do Was that what you 30,000. On a slow night. I don't understand. Had a bartender in New York on a worst night, oh, she would make 30K. Birthday, she, made she did it for 30. 30K in a night? Where is she at? Oh, my birthday's yeah, on me. Like, I made yeah. like 60. 65, 70. You believe that? Oh, yeah. And you believe that? That's <laughs> what so, so, Making the money that I was Happened, making. Yo. I was only working there, only on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, coming home. Hold on, hold on. So, making the money. 65, 70. You believe that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, making the money that I was making. I was only working there, only on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, coming home. You know, I don't like to talk like I'm cocky and stuff like You make, you made $70,000 as a bartender on a Sunday. She lying. Uh, she lying like shit, bro. Coming home with eight thousand dollars. Good days. Bartending? Yes. Oh, eight thousand. Yeah, I ruined it for the script. No. During the pandemic, there was a boom of seventy k is crazy though. Content. You were able to go to Best Buy, go to Amazon.com, order a microphone, a camera, and start up a podcast with your friends because you had one good conversation about the education system, giraffes, and Count Dracula. People had nothing to do in their homes, and gay son thought daughter conversation podcast boom. The topic of discussions: 50-50, who is the man, and what is a provider. All these conversations became so pervasive and could not be missed out on the internet. But this only placed television shows and movies because there was only so much creativity you could do by not being able to contact each other physically. But now, four years removed from the 2020 pandemic, we still have people trying to replicate this lightning in a bottle type of situation while a bunch of other people have left the game. And to be honest with you, I'm here to tell you, stop doing podcasts. Yeah. You guys, okay, I'm gonna say something. Oh my god, I think I saw this. I, she said some racist shit, bro. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but she said some some racist shit, bro. Kind of wild, but it's because I saw it somewhere. But I don't know if we might have to cut it out. But anyways, someone said that the reason why some girls' vagina is tighter than others is Less because, used. huh? Listen, listen, listen. With that, they said that it's because, like, ethnicity-wise, yeah. like, like black men have, you know, are known to have larger dicks, so yeah. therefore the women have that makes sense. Bigger it's holes. Bitch. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, this, like, bro, she actually said this shit. She actually said this shit. Like, bro, are, aren't you a woman yourself? Don't you not? Do you not know how the anatomy works? And then you know how you, yeah, that doesn't you know, make sense. Trust me, I was so mind blown when I heard. Do you that not know how anatomy works? Myself, there has to be some sort of explanation. She has to be apologetic for whatever. I just had to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Um, I want to take this moment to sincerely apologize for pro uh, for a topic that I brought up. It wasn't my view or opinion, but I understand that even bringing it up was super inappropriate and harmful. And I've heard so many of you guys, um, especially in the black community and among black women. <laughs> and like, I'm just sorry like for perpetuating a harmful stereotype. Because why would you say that? Type. And moving forward, I will no longer bring exactly, up any like, topics bro. that could be harmful to anybody. I mean, we're all Asian and we've dealt with like pretty hateful stereotypes as well. And I should have known better because I've been hurt by those two, you know? So I exactly. truly, truly apologize for that. Like it wasn't my intention to okay. hurt anyone, but I understand that intentions don't matter when the impact was so hurtful and I'm learning and I'm growing from this. And yeah, I don't know what to say other than that. I'm, I'm really sorry. Now me personally, I've made a okay. career off of yapping on podcasts before I would like to think that i'm somewhat successful at least yeah. enough to get some sort of damn nigga all right I, all right i will say this bro it, it does seem that she is remorseful about it and she's actually genuinely sorry um y'all not mad at her mission for it but i've never thought to myself hmm what are the sizes of the vagina holes or pieces of another ethnic background but i can't get over the mind. fact that she really just brought that shit up it's like it's like why would you say that you're a woman yourself so why wouldn't you don't you know that like it doesn't matter the size of the actual thing it goes back to normal regardless 
this when I've been podcasting. And I get it. At some point on a podcast, you're going to have to yap, but you don't have to yap about everything. There's just certain things that just don't even come to my mind, probably because I'm not a stupid person to think that this is okay to say, and I just don't yap about them. People get on these podcasts That's a big looking fact. to say stupid things in order to go viral. I'm convinced. This used to be stuff that belonged in group chats or maybe friend speech or whatever the case may be. And if this is what you and your friends are talking about, then that's probably a good sign that you shouldn't be starting a podcast. But I'm under the belief that they <laughs> intentionally go out of their way to say these dumb ass talking points in order to get some sort of moment that'll generate them likes and views or even get some sort of rage bait. One of the things that has come out of podcasts that has real life impacts and is actually detrimental is its impacts on the male and female relationships in today's society. Marriage is also sex work? Successful podcast, I know that I have to do a lot of prefacing when I tell people that, hey, this isn't the Manosphere Alpha Male podcast that you're familiar with. I'm just talking about hoops and a bunch of guy shit with my friends. And then if you're a woman, it seems to be some sort of platform where you get off your dumb babble bullshit and explain to yourself and expose yourself as to why you are chronically single. That's my husband. Yo, that's a fact, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes when I watch these podcasts with these women, I'm like, bro, this is kind of why you're single, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like, <laughs> right. He ended up going broke. I have expectations. When you don't meet my expectations, I move the hell on. You left your husband because he went through. Oh my God, this is the dude with the soundboard. This is before the soundboard. Little financial struggle. And did. At any point in time, did you feel that love should have kept you there i feel like he didn't love me because if he did he wouldn't have went through a financial struggle okay i don't love you because i'm I, i'm in I, I don't love you because I'm in a financial, I'm in a financially difficult situation, so I don't love you? A man that loves a woman don't go through hard times. What happened to a man who loves a woman doesn't go through hard times? <laughs> what the fuck? For better or for worse. <laughs> what happened to in sickness and in health? What happened to richer for poor? This woman openly admitting why she should never be taken seriously into a relationship is something that could only exist between two couches, two microphones, and a camera that's gonna get you thousands of views to expose how much of a jackass you are. Now, I'm gonna be- That's a fact, because literally, if this was just your boyfriend, okay, I get it, whatever. But this is your husband. Like he just said, for better or for worse, bro. You guys are married. Quite honest with you, podcasting is one of the most low overhead, low effort ways to make some sort of content. All it takes is four mics, some sort of software or platform that is usually free or very, very cheap on a monthly basis, and guys or girls that come together on any given time. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I'm sorry I keep pausing. I'm not gonna lie. Please let me just get this out. Do not skip this if you're watching this as a video, bro. Let me get this out. The fact that podcasting is actually more hated than reactions is insane the fact that podcasting is actually respected less than reactions is is mind-boggling bro now don't get me wrong not everybody hates reactors because there's reactors that add shit to the things they're reacting to I'm I'm an example like I, I don't sit here and just watch the video and eat food and just let it play or I don't just like laugh at everything and that's it like I actually give my take on some stuff so I, I feel like people who are like that me included that's the people that people like that that's the type of reactors that people like but the ones that are like let me just sit here watch the video play through and just sit here and watch it no added commentary basically just watching the video and just sitting there that's the that's the type of reactors that people like don't respect or just think it's like bottom scraping the bottom of the barrel for content but the fact that podcasting is now below those people is actually wild bro that they commit to for a continuous amount of time that's it there's really no edits there's really no going out there buying permits there's really not a lot of overhead in podcasting it doesn't take too much creativity you take a bunch of topics that are circulating on twitter circulating on instagram and you come together and you give your nonsensical takes and that's why everybody thinks that they can do it but the problem with these people is they're not conversationalists hell half of them can't even read most of the time mm -hmm. they're on these platforms to get their dumb 
agendas off to further pit men and women against each other or yep. they're trying to explain why their became a meta, yeah. is okay and acceptable for other people to be living i remember really when they came out too about this conversation i was having regarding prostitution was this came off the back of me saying that the thing people don't want to recognize is marriage also is work because a lot of women what they're doing Ooh. is you sleep with a man you get money or you hang out with him you get money why i say marriage is is because women engage in marriage from a place where okay he's gonna <laughs> ideally he's gonna take Jeez. care of you financially and there's a home for mm. you both to live in and what you are doing is you're fulfilling a role so you're gonna either be some sort of like homemaker homekeeper you're raising and the waist trainer is fucking disgusting partnering with him and over the outfit you could have put it under trade-off will be that you get validation love and upkeep and the man understands and believes that if he continues to fulfill that role for you then the arrangement works because marriage is an arrangement whilst it's not necessarily Necessarily on the surface, you're for a transaction or a exchange. There's something that you're fucking for. I guess the reason why that gotta be the dumbest. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have watched this video because I'm like, I'm like, like really, really close to crashing out because that had to be the dumbest shit I'd ever heard. Marriage is sex work because you're fucking for something, even though it's not like that on the surface level. You're fucking for something. No. This is why you're not married. Oh my gosh, bro. It's the because it yes, there's probably people out there who would who would literally who would who will you know who will have sex with her. Fine. People have sex with anything, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. People have sex with anything in this world. But I guarantee you there's not many men, shout out 50 Cent, that would want to be in a relationship with this. Because what it's the just, fuck is you talking it's about? It's, it's nothing but... Marriage is so sex this, work. What? You go, to even get to the marriage, there would have been a build of a relationship. Why I'm fascinated by that is because what people really miss out on in that conversation and in their opposition to the idea of marriage being a form of sex work is once you stop being able to render that service to the man, he leaves you. Once men stop... You're basing marriage, you're basing, you're basing the entirety of marriage on sex. You're basing the entirety of marriage on some stories from maybe your homegirls that you've heard of them going celibate or, or stop giving up the pussy and their mans left them. You're hearing some stories and you're equating the whole essence of marriage to just being about sex. That shit is crazy, bro. That shit is crazy. You as a person that there are people who are married. There are people who are married for like 50 years. And obviously at some point they cannot have sex anymore. And they stay married. Why? Because marriage isn't sex work. Fuck are we talking about? can fulfill that transactional need that they want from you, their energy switches up very quickly. Now this is stupid, and don't get me wrong, there might be somebody who is literally trading security, housing, comfort, shelter for some sort People of- People are shallow, bro. favor in the bedroom. Hey, but if the sex is good, it seems like a good trade off. But in all reality, this isn't a reflection of a modern day world. This isn't a reflection as to what goes on in today's society. Most people work. It's usually a split of the bills, not necessarily 50-50. God, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna get into that conversation. I don't but both parties <laughs> are contributing to the household financially. Now, she may have been able to make better claims about marriage potentially being sex work. If she's stuck on the points of, hey, men are tending to leave women in their time of need more often than women leave when men are in time, that might have been a better case. That could have been a better argument. Also, be with who wants to be with you. I'm tired of these people talking about these overly depressive situations that they normally don't live nor have ever lived nor know anybody in these situations situations and trying to amplify it and boost it to where it's supposed to be on everybody's situation that's no, what i said me every time i listen to these podcasts, that's literally what i said you're trying to equate it you're trying to tell trying to equate like maybe something that's happened to your homegirls to every every marriage cast clips i feel like that one drewski meme where he's sitting at kanye west concert and he's pointing at himself because kanye is looking at him he's like who, me because quite frankly <laughs> i don't know anybody that this is applicable to now usually no. i don't do any digging on these very salacious and viral talking points on the internet it's usually just somebody who can't read i actually know somebody personally 
I actually know somebody personally who had a sick wife and stayed with her during her time of need. Obviously, they did not have sex because she was sick for real, for real. And he took care of her. He came into work every day and he did his job. He went home. He took care of her. So for a bitch to get on the internet with a fucking podcast mic and say marriage is sex work is is it's insane when there are good people out there like that, bro. It's insane when there are great people in this world Talking like that. Who can't read and they got people podcast. generalizing the whole thing and like it's just sex this work. Person, the Slum Flower has her own platform where she makes her own version of a podcast that's by herself where she babbles on about some of the same topics. This was literally podcast inception. One dummy talking to another dummy about how her platform is made for dummies. It's like reading those yellow books, How To For Dummies, and the How To For Dummies <laughs> is How To I yapped a lot this video, bro. It's like 15 minutes that's of recording like already. And it's, One of the bigger I'm only nine minutes in. I'm sorry, y'all. The first clip with the Asian woman, Esther. And a this lot is of actually something that I'm very that passionate about. This Love. Time often <laughs> to misinterpret academic research and studies. They read the abstract, you know, the first portion of these scientific studies. Or, you know, you go into a website and you have to scroll down and it says sign up and pay a dollar to get access to the whole article. But they read the first portion. They take that, spin it, put their thing down, down, flip it, and reverse it. it. And make their <laughs> own take that has nothing to do with the end of the article. I swear that if they continue to read a lot of the articles articles at the end of it will be like psych i'm just glad i got you to read this for this long hopefully you don't take any of these talking points seriously because you would look like a dumbass if you ever regurgitated these things mm -hmm. i don't think these people realize that now the nope. sunflower woman got the whole ho3 sex work community up in arms and they decided to march together and regurgitate these talking points on a multitude of platforms after her. Oh, but no. this does bring up a good question that i alluded to earlier on in the show if a guy pulls up to uh, a person on the street and says wow you're so beautiful want to go on a date with me and then she says yes and he goes let's go out for dinner and they go out for dinner and then he was like you know what i know it's soon but why don't you be my girlfriend now i always take care of my girlfriend you know what as my girlfriend here's an allowance no, is, is that, that is that not prostitution it is so is marriage marriage is prostitution the, 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 what the, how definitely 100 percent. he's paying her girl look at who's saying this To sit there and have marriage. babies and, <laughs> and, and and cook for him. They're, it's a they're mutually taking beneficial care of her. relationship. It's a, I don't, it's I don't, I don't it's a financially. I don't, I don't, oh, and alimony. Emotionally, physically. Alimony, as soon as they get women divorced. Women who are married live well, I hate this. I hate this because she's using words as when they get divorced. Like, you're, you're putting... And you're already putting a negative spin on their relationship and you don't even know them. This is, this isn't even, this is a hypothetical. First of all, you're putting a negative outlook on a relationship that doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. It's a hypothetical and you already think the man is a piece of shit, bro. Oh my fuck. Oh my God, bro. You're not yeah. having anymore Men. with alimony depends true um i would absolutely disagree i think marriage matrimony is beautiful it was designed by god for a reason it's supposed to be, both men and women anymore. benefit from maybe what you've seen growing up but from what i've seen marriage is the most beautiful rewarding thing such beautiful I'm, insight from a beautiful person it's i was just about to say i'm glad she she checked her because what the fuck is she talking about? We need it in today's climate. Podcast I'm glad she said that. That's varieties. a W woman right we're there. We're talking about informational. We're talking about sports. We're talking about comedy. And I would naturally classify anybody saying that sex work is marriage with the limited scope that they have on it. It'd be some sort of comedic platform. But the problem that I have with labeling this as a comedic platform is that people are actually on social media taking this seriously. They don't realize that they're being caught up in the algorithm games. They don't realize that they're being caught up in the divisive conversations. They don't realize that they're actually harming people people in real life and for the most part this is a chronically online problem i tried yeah. to go out and have this conversation with a couple of my friends yeah the one time that i got out this month and didn't sit in my dark room and make a bunch of videos and they literally had no clue what i was talking about this sounded super foreign to them this was men and women and, and that's my point bro like 90 percent of the shit said in podcasts is only for chronically online people like, if you go out there and talk to real women, I promise you none of them think like this, bro. All right, man, I won't say none of them, but, like, a majority of them don't think like that, bro. A majority of them don't say the shit that these internet bitches say. Same thing with men. A majority of these niggas don't say what these internet niggas say. <laughs> it's, it's like, bro, 
and they told me to shut the hell up and they asked me how my work was going like it, this wasn't even really a serious topic but then there becomes these couple of people who later on get on twitter and get their tweets off about how terrible the dating life is but it's because they're consuming this babble like this and a lot of this wouldn't even exist if people actually lived life and stopped taking their talking points from the internet and then Fact. bringing it to a platform because they saw the talking point on the internet to bring it to a platform that we went from don't believe to everything that you see on the internet to believe every single word that you hear on the internet going to be on the internet if you poll people in real life i would want to know if they would say the same thing about sex, marriage work pollution, or anything of that matter do they even know real married couples in real life that would confirm or deny the fact that this is the case they don't know exactly <laughs> they just live in their own echo chamber now oftentimes on this platform we dunk on the red pill alpha male community the fresh and fits the tim pools of the world but there are exact opposites of extreme opinions set up in the podcasting space where people are just sitting down talking to a mic and they are giving the most bullshit <sighs> I gotta yeah. let you see it. If I were 22 today, I would not be dating black men at all, be unless they were older. They'd have to be real old because they're too feminine these days for me. I like masculine, go get them. I'm a pay for that baby type men. Y'all take too long to get y'all stuff together. Y'all want us to pay half the bills. How are you gonna say this about an entire race, bro? <laughs> <laughs> How are you gonna say this about an entire race, bro? Can't sleep with you? No, can't do that. Especially so your own. I'm not saying that other men are better than you. I'm just saying they're more ambitious than you. Yes, you can play basketball and football really good. You dominate the rap game, but the average non-famous black man has less ambition. I like ambition. Ambition leads to success. Oh, sorry. Others have a financial head start. They are not more ambitious. Mm, that's not really true. You can't use that as an excuse. If you're ambitious, you don't need a head start. If you good, you don't need a head start. My husband. Yeah, but a lot of these people do have head starts. That's the point that the person's making, bro. Oh they my God. No head start. He's black. Yeah, he came from a family of 10 in the country and they have no head start. My husband didn't have no head start and he's black. Oh my God, you just proved the point of what that person was just saying. Start, if you good, you don't need a head start. My husband didn't have no head start. He's black. He, had, he came from a family she of is 10 actually in stupid. the country. You're he just proving no the point that this so nigga just excuse? said. You come up with every excuse instead of every solution. That's your problem. You're gonna sit here and say, Oh, this, oh, that. You're going to come up with 10 excuses before you come up with half a solution. That's why you stuck. That's why women make more money than you. That's why you are stuck. Okay? And that's just the honest truth. Everybody sees that. Everyone. Except y'all. Mm, mm, go queen. Yes. <laughs> Child, say, you are spitting. Go ahead. And they wonder why female loneliness, male loneliness, or anybody's just general loneliness in today's society is through the fucking roof. That yeah. was Shara Seven, and I have a hard time even sharing her name out there, no pun intended. But that's the type of mess that she feels is okay to just establish and put out on the internet. And I don't even have to put out statistics about record high inflation, job insecurity in this world the inability to move up like she did in the 1970s or 60s or however old she is but this is the type of content 60s. that people are consuming on a day-to-day -day basis thinking it's intelligent and moving throughout their lives taking it as gospel you know also crazy. i'm tired thought, because social media did this too i'm tired of people thinking that you're supposed to have your life together and be rich by 21 or 22 like the fact that there's women out there that are like 20 years old, 19 years old, and it's like, oh, if he doesn't drive a fucking, if he doesn't make six figures a month, I don't want to, I don't want him. What normal 20 year old is making six figures a month? Come on now. Like, thought about it, like 90% of the relationship podcast. And the ones are who are probably don't even want you. Like, let's be real. People. And of course, some of them may be quote unquote happy or in marriages or whatever the case may be, but that doesn't stop them from spewing negativity, hatred, and outright unrealistic expectations from a lot of the people that are on there on the internet. So on one side <laughs> of the spectrum, you have oh. this red pill alpha male beat my chest podcast. And on the other side, you have a share of seven. Both of them are teaching a 
group or a collective or a generation of people to not deal with each other. And then you're going to have a bunch of broken 30, 40 and 50 year olds trying to come together, trying to put their differences to the side, but are too stubborn. And then ultimately you have a whole generation of loneliness, low birth rates and whatever else the hell is going on no right blessing. now in today's society. Podcasts are supposed to be entertaining and informational. They're supposed to be filled with the stories of the old or the stories of the expertise, you know, insight from those that have a different level of knowledge from people that, you know, don't normally exist in those worlds. You have podcasts like the Joe Budden podcast, who even though he says a bunch of disgusting stuff on that platform where he's talking about jerking off dogs and stuff like that, but he also gives the insight from somebody who has been scorned in the music business and somebody who has existed in rap, the profession for a long time. You have podcasts like Gills Arena, which features an ex-NBA player telling his stories of the NBA and also giving insight on today's game from the perspective of somebody who's made a 10 plus year career playing the game of basketball professionally. And then you have the great storytellers on the platform, the ones that really get into the murder mysteries or the crime or maybe something. I'm not gonna lie, bro. There's this one girl that my, my girl watches. She like does her makeup while she tells like true crime stories. Those shits are fucking fire, bro. I am not gonna lie, they're fucking fire, bro. Going on <laughs> I hope she didn't right hear me say that. In today's society, <laughs> I think there's a lot of trash out there, but those are fucking fire, bro. Something new. Oftentimes, what gets glamorized is the complete garbage platforms where they are propping up individuals who get viral moments like the Hawk to a girl and end up saying the stupidest stuff because they got paid to get a mic put in front of their face. You ever had to at a man's house? Yeah, I just. I don't even try to hide it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, real, we, real said, we got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> this one is by far the absolute worst. Again, I am not an envious person in the slightest, actually. I, I, I like look at other people's success and it just motivates me to go even harder. But pause. Um, This one is the most insane one to me because she went viral for saying a phrase like hawk to a spit on that thing it wasn't even really fucking funny if i'm being honest with you she went viral and now she does content she does a podcast she has all of this shit and she is rich now basically from a street interview where she says just a sentence and now she does a podcast where she just says the dumbest shit ever and she's getting bread it's it didn't, like I can't lie. I respect the hustle because like she could have just had that viral moment and it did nothing about it. So I can appreciate the fact that she took advantage of it. But it's just crazy that these niggas gave her that much attention, bro. It's crazy these niggas gave her that much attention, bro. Yeah. It's gonna make her as famous as Haley. Why you holy this shit? too? Why my guy called sh with Chelsea? I'm, <laughs> I'm in. She's hot to spit on that thing. I'm hot to spit on that thing. <laughs> Her, I had to say on that thing. Yes. Okay, maybe not. Shit that. On that, thing. that respect. <laughs> yeah, I, just dab. She that, just I mean, fucking dab. I managed spit girl and shit girl. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Two girls, one cup was very. Parents be so proud. And the stupidity that comes out of the hawk to a girl's mouth shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. I mean, she's literally At all. millions of dollars to do that dumbass shit on a podcast, label it under comedy, and everybody gets away with it. But what happens based off of her opinions, her talking points online, is the fact that people then say to themselves, "Yo, we got mics. We're four friends. Why don't we do the same thing as the hawk to a girl?" Socrates is remembered for two thousand years, like longer than Jesus. That's crazy. That's because he came up with some theories about how the life worked and how to organize and plan and see how people look at things. You know what I mean? Please raise the price on podcasting equipment. The Please place make it nefariously to impossible to buy, bro. No matter what. But that doesn't mean that everybody should go out there, spend $400 on a mic, $700 on a Rodecaster, call their buddies over, crack open a Pabst Blue Ribbon or maybe some jar jams wine, jam jar wine and decide, hey, we should start a podcast. You can say what you want, but it should probably just exist to you and your friends on a small platform. Look, I've been consuming a bunch of podcasts over the last couple years naturally because i'm trying to grow my podcast but it has been some of the hardest to digest because of the ease and accessibility that people have to starting a podcast it makes people believe that their opinion is worth listening to hearing out or whatever the case may be and i'm here to say that after this three year span in which i've existed on the internet there should not be any more new podcasts started period because nobody wants to hear That's any fact. dumbass takes like these oh i don't i'm sorry i can't do it oh, i need somebody with cold 
I can't do ass who? takes like these. I don't. I'm sorry. I can't do Americans. I need somebody with culture. I'm sorry. I'm black sorry. black Whoa. Americans got culture. I can't do. Aren't you American? You don't, you don't sound Americans. like you're from somewhere else, somebody bro. With culture. I'm sorry. It's like these. I don't. I'm sorry. I can't do Americans. I need somebody with culture. I'm sorry. You are. I mean, you have an American accent. You don't sound like you're from a different country. I'm black black okay. Americans got culture. Oh, Americans got, got culture. Oh, we got, got culture. We got like, the culture. We are the culture. Right, yeah. Who the culture? We are the culture. Listen, culture. 1804, I'm the reason why you I, have no, your I hate, the part I hate Haitians about was the first people, free independent country. First black because, free independent country. That ain't got nothing to do with that. That doesn't have anything to do with it, bro. So she is from a Caribbean island. But, bro, rap. Black American culture, Jay's Black American culture, F some of the fashion shit, Black American culture, jewelry, Black American culture, those long ass fucking eyelashes you have on your fucking eyes, Black American culture. What are you talking about? America? Women want to cook and clean for the men anymore because they're tired, bro. They have to go to work every day. That's not hard. They're tired. Yeah, they got to go to work every day, just like you. What are they, what are they tired of? Of working. It's not hard. Aren't you tired when you get home from work? They're working every day, so they're tired. That's why I don't want to cook. Yeah. You think I want to work eight hours and then come home and, and, and then cook and clean? I mean, I do it because I have to. I have five children. But yeah, I mean. Do, do you have like, a woman right now? I've been married since, uh, I've been married for over 20 years. Does your wife work? Absolutely. What are the roles in a marriage? Well, what are you talking about role? And you, everybody does what they have to do. Well, okay, what's your, what do you do? What does she do? For a living? No, in the no, house, nigga. the marriage. What do you guys do? What are your roles? Role? I, I, I don't, I don't understand the question. I, oh my God, nigga! What do you do in the household, and what does she do in the household? It's really that simple, bro. She does, she does what needs to be done that day if she has time to do it, and if she doesn't, I do it. I do what needs to be done that day, and if I don't have time to do it, she does. It. But roles, I don't know. What you're I, how do you not? How do you not know what roles are in a marriage? You're married for twenty years. You guys don't because have those any don't roles? exist because those don't exist. I fucking love young women. <laughs> Between 21 and 25, these women typically very malleable, extremely cooperative. They don't have many negative experiences, so they do truly give you great. If you're making fifty thousand dollars, don't date. I'm. I'm just, oh my god, this bitch. Oh my. Being for real, you're not ready to date, and you're not ready to date because courtship costs. You can go for twenty two walks in the park, but eventually, shorty is gonna need a sip of something. She's gonna be thirsty. <laughs> so if you don't have any expendable cash, don't date. And whatever that looks like for you, you might only make 50,000, but you live in a shoe. Fellas, if you're broke, don't date. You're not ready to date yet. Or get you a bottom of the barrel bitch that's gonna date you when you have no money. My definition of success is across the <laughs> board. If you're not ripped, if you're not rich, if you ain't rare, if you don't stand out, if you ain't across the board successful, it doesn't mean fucking shit. If you got straight tits and you're in your Rolls Royce, you look like a fucking clown to me. You have a shout out DJ Khaled, who probably has more money than you and probably gets more bitches than you, nigga. I, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a stack, bro. Weakness, change it, motherfucker. I'm about to call Sure. I'm about to call Road, and I'm about to get them to increase the price of these mics ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> Absolutely, bro. Please, please, please get them to do that, bro. Cause fucking hell, bro. Insane. Podcast shit needs to cost more, bro. It does. It does. I think it, I think it needs to be nefariously impossible to get your hands on podcast equipment.